Small point shoot cameras seemed all but dead after sales kept plummeting down and down as smartphone cameras kept getting better year after year. But we have all recently seen that Fuji camera sell out of stock and the used market go crazy. So just like back from the dead, we now have a brand new smaller body design from Lumix and that is the S9. But the real question for me is how does that differ to the already amazing value camera, the S5 Mark II? In this video, we're going to find out just that and I'm gonna recommend which one I think you should buy. So for anybody who is not familiar with the S9, it is the latest S camera from Panasonic. The S means that it has a full frame sensor. Matter of fact, it is the same full frame sensor that is in the massively successful S5 Mark II. So if these cameras are from the same manufacturer with the same full frame sensor, then what are the differences in terms of image quality? Well, let's talk about that. As I normally do with these type of videos, I started running side-by-side -side tests to compare the image quality. But after running just one or two tests, I quickly realized that I could not tell a difference. So from my personal testing, the image quality out of these two cameras is identical. That is anyway, when it comes to capturing video, I did not test any photos as photographer is not really my field and I tend to stay away. So when it comes to the image process line for video, these cameras are the same. Which for me makes it even more interesting. Lumix are clearly making this camera for a reason. So I'm going to compare and find out what the actual differences are and hopefully that will help anybody comparing these cameras maybe wanting to enter the Panasonic ecosystem. So let's not waste any more time and find out which one of these cameras is actually better. The first and obvious reason is going to be how unnoticeable the S9 actually is. There's like a whole scale for this and at the very bottom of that scale we would have the likes of a Fuji cam. And let's say in the middle of this scale we have the likes of a Blackmagic Pocket or a Red Komodo. And then at the top of the scale you get into the big boys like an Arri Alexa, a Sony Venice, Sony Brano, you get the idea. So then where would we place the S9 and the S5 on this scale? Let's start with the S9. For me, this goes at the very bottom, right in there with the Fuji cameras and any other small point and shoot cameras. The S5 II though gets a little bit more tricky. Once you start rigging this thing up with maybe an extra battery or a bigger lens, etc., then I would probably put it more towards that Blackmagic Pocket or Red Komodo. But on the same hand, if you keep it without a cage and just put a pancake lens on it, then I would probably say it goes right at the bottom with the Fuji and the S9. Something else the S9 has over the S5 is the color options. I'm not too sure how I personally feel about this. Maybe I'm a little old for their target audience, but I do think it looks quite nice in the blue color that I got into tests. And I guess anybody who does like this level of customization, this is a nice feature to have. Lumix also announced their new Lumix Lab app along with the S9. Initially, I thought this was going to be some sort of exclusive app that comes along with the S9, but on Panasonic's website, it now states this is coming to a lot more of the Lumix cameras, including the S5 II. It's a pretty cool concept. It quickly allows you to transfer images and video files back and forth from your smartphone. But once they are on your smartphone, it has a built-in kind of color grading tool set. And once you have graded your photo or video, it lets you create a look file sending this back to the camera and allows you to either view with this look or burn it in in real time. This is actually surprisingly similar to a concept they do on really, really big budget videos in Hollywood. And I made a whole video dedicated to that that I will link at the end of this video. The last thing the S9 has that the S5 II does not, kind of, would be a dedicated look button. On the back of the S9, there's a button just above your LCD screen that says look. Pressing this takes you into the look menu. The S5 II does have a look menu, but it just does not have a dedicated button. For me, this is a bit strange as you can map one of the custom buttons on the S5 II to bring up the look menu and it allows you to do it to any one of the many custom buttons. So making it a dedicated button is almost a disadvantage and I'll touch more on this a little bit later. And that's about it for reasons to buy the S9. You can sum it up in being smaller, lighter, and comes in different colors. So now let's take a look at what the S5 II can do that the S9 cannot. Let's start off with design. 
The S5 II has a slightly bigger body, allowing for much more buttons, and more importantly, much more customizable buttons. And this really does make a difference when you are using these cameras day to day. Maybe it's because I'm so used to using the S5 II and the S9 is quite a new camera to me, but I just find myself so frustrated having to dive into menus, into more menus, to get to options I want to change that are simply one button on the S5. The next one is the biggest deal breaker of all for me, and that is the S9 has record limits, depending on what resolution and aspect ratio you choose. So in 6K open gate, you will be limited to 10 minutes. And then in 4K, 16 by nine, you are limited to 15 minutes. Finally, you can drop down to 1080p and get 20 minutes. Do not get me wrong, I'm sure keeping that 6K sensor capturing open gate in such a small body cool is really difficult. So I totally understand the Panasonic don't want you to hit overheating with this camera. But is the S5 II body really that much bigger? And that takes me on to the fan inside the S5 II. This thing keeps the S5 II cool for so long and you will not experience any overheating. And it also comes with another benefit. The fan is built into the EVF on the S5. When I was using the S9, I had it on a strap around my neck and I was just walking around trying to get as much footage and shots as possible. I could not for the life of me stop myself putting the EVF to my eye even though the S9 does not have one. Anybody who's used a Fujet or an Olympus or any camera that is a small point and shoot camera with an EVF will know how much better it is. I think Panasonic really missed the trick here not adding an EVF with a fan built in which removed those record limits. But then again, would that just take us back to having another S5 too? Another benefit for the S5 is full size HMI. The S9 is limited to mini or micro HMI just one of those little ones where your cables always break and it is so frustrating. I don't think this is a massive deal as I don't expect too many people picking up an S9 to want to use an external monitor on the camera as it's such a small body. But if you wanted to do a talking head like this one on YouTube, you may want to link to a bigger screen so you can see yourself. But then again, that takes me back to there is record limits. So is anybody going to do talking heads on a camera with record limits? While we are talking about IO, something else the S5 II has is a headphone jack. Now, I think this one may be a big deal for S9 users as they pitch it as a vlogging camera, something that you may pick up quick interviews or speak to camera in short bursts. And you're going to be using different mics, labs to pick up quick interviews when you are out and about. This will be two sources of audio coming into the camera. And yes, while you'll be able to view the waveform, that is never quite as safe as listening back. And my final reason to buy the S5 II over the S9 would be dual SD card slots. And not only do you get one extra SD card slot, it's also in a much better place. On the S9, it is in the bottom where the battery goes, just at the side of it due to its like thinner and smaller body design, where on the S5 II, it gets its own dedicated space which just feels much more premium. Right, just before we dive into prices and my final thoughts on these two cameras, I want to ask you to please hit that subscribe button. I'm coming up to 9,000 subs, which takes me onto the last push to 10K subscribers. That is a massive milestone for a small channel like my own and something only one, two years ago I thought was not even possible. So please hit the sub button as it means so much. Over the last two to three years, I've been so impressed with Lumix and what they've done in terms of creating cameras that are amazing at capturing video. With the S5 II and more recently the GH7, they have given us value that did not exist in the marketplace before. But at the time of recording this video, the recommended retail price for the S9 is 1,400 USD. And the recommended retail price for the S5 II is 1,700 USD. But on b &H right now, as I record this, there is a special offer on the S5 II for 1,200 USD. And that is a big problem for the S9. With how much they have taken away, bringing in record limits, losing the EVF, losing a headphone port to make the S9 possible. And at the moment it's more expensive than the S5 II. I think Panasonic have missed the mark here. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I believe if you put a pancake lens on the S5 II and put a strap on it and wear it, 
there would be no issues. No one would ever question you. It's not going to be too heavy that you can't take it on vacation. And it basically becomes the same camera for cheaper with a lot more features. Unless you are someone who really loves the aesthetics of the color options for the S9, then I'm going to recommend that you should just pick up an S5 II either used or on sale and get yourself an amazing deal as the value just keeps getting better and better. I think for Lumix to make the S9 a success, they need to take the camera and bring it under $1,000 new. And then maybe there's a place in the market for the camera. A big positive for all us Lumix users though is we now get the Lumix Lab app which is coming to most of the cameras and if you want to watch that video I talked about where they use a similar concept on big budget productions, click here.